Hello everybody, and welcome to ACES and OpenColor I.O. workflow in After Effects, Maya, and Nuke. In this lesson, let's examine a simple workflow when working with the ACES color profile in Maya, After Effects, and Nuke. What is ACES? If you search up ACES or OpenColor I.O., you most likely have seen this graph before. I don't know too much about this graph, except in this triangle, the red triangle, we can see all the colors we have available when working with our sRGB images. Those are just our standard images that we work in, let's say Photoshop or After Effects. But the ACES CG color profile represents all the colors inside of this purple triangle. And you can see there are much more colors available to work with. Okay, enough of that graph and the technical parts. Let's get started. Okay, here I am in Maya, and I have a simple scene of a cell phone case. I will open up the V-Ray frame buffer and examine my render here. If I go over here and select display color correction, down here in the properties, you'll see I have some bullets available to us. That's no color correction. Here we have the sRGB display correction, which is available to us when we, let's say, import the image into Photoshop or After Effects. And here's a gamma 2.2. But now over here we have the OCIO. Here's the option that some of you might not know. So if I check this, notice what happened. Our display correction seemed to have opened up more color values to our image. That's because we are using this config.ocio along with our ACES color profile to sort of color correct this image. It's not really a color correction, but rather helps the ACES color profile to color this image. Now again, this is a picture you might see in Photoshop or After Effects. Now one thing you'll notice is if I save and export this image, okay, here in After Effects, in my project window, I'll just import that EXR. And yes, it notices it's an EXR file, so that's okay. It can build our other layers, but since we just have one layer in our test assembly, we just have the RGBA layer, and that's fine. Now here in our test EXR, it comes in with linear light. Now this image right here being processed is exactly how we saw here in V-Ray. The sRGB color correction is applied here in After Effects automatically. So in order for our image to change from sRGB to this OCIO ACES CG color space, we have to apply the same color correction, put our image in the ACES CG color space in After Effects. How can we do that? The first thing I have to do is download this Open Color IO effect which will convert our image to the ACES CG color space. Another thing we have to do is download the config file for ACES. Okay, the first thing we can do is download from this website here. You see the post was May 2012, but in fact, the plugin version, you can see it is, has been updated since then with the 2021 versions. We can just download here with this button right here. I will take the OpenColor IO plugin file and drop it into my After Effects current version support files slash plugins folder. And I've put it right here beside my effects in the plugins folder. After restarting After Effects, I can now apply the effect. OpenColor.io. This effect lies in the utility, open color IO. Picture this as just selecting this right here in our V-Ray frame buffer. Now we need a config file and we need the settings. So here I've gone to the open color IO configs on the GitHub page where I can download this by clicking on code, download zip, and I can download all these different ACES config files. Okay, here I am in 7-zip. Here's the one that I want. The current version, version 1.2. I will take this ACES folder and I will come to my C slash program data folder and I will create a folder called open color IO. And then I will drop that ACES folder right inside here. And I can put other versions as well in here if I wanted different config files. Now back here in After Effects, when I select this, it will show me all the different versions of ACES I have available in that program data 
slash open color IO folder, or I can select a custom config file. But here, since it's easy for me to just select ACE as 1.2, I'll select it. Now, not much here to understand except input and output. Input, we want the ACEs, CG, because this is the color profile we want to work with. And we want to output that to output sRGB. Now, if we turn the effect on and off, we can see it doesn't match very well, and that's because we have to interpret our footage. So if we right click or interpret footage main control alt G, I can change the way the alpha is interpreted here, which would help me in my workflow as well. But more importantly, I'm interested in this color management tab and I just need to check this. Preserve RGB. Now our image looks correct. So let's review the steps. First, apply the open color IO effect, select the ACES config, change the input ACES CG, in the output sRGB, come here, interpret footage, main, color management, and check this. Great. Now does it match? I'll hit tilde to full screen, and then I can switch back to Maya and see my V-Ray frame buffer back and forth, and it matches very well. To make sure the ACES color profile is being used in Maya, go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Preferences, and here under Color Management Settings, make sure that Color Management is enabled, and we can see it is up here when it's on. You can either use the Legacy, which is just the sRGB, or the Default, which is now the Rendering Space ACES CG. The display is sRGB, and the view is ACES 1.0 SDR video. And the rendering space, the display in the view, must match here in the display correction. You can see when I select OCIO, the same as here. Something I can do is I can copy this config and put it here in the open color IO folder as well. If I paste that there, if I select the configuration, you can see now I have my Maya 2022 dash default. So I will select that. Now you'll see some things have changed. And that's okay because we can just set up the same exact thing that we did before. Make sure the input color space, you'll see the options are a little different here, but this time, scan line linear, ACES CG, output color space, display sRGB. In this way, as you can see, the color is a little off. And the reason that is, is because we want to select display, not convert. Because if we select convert, we're missing that extra one that we had in V-Ray. And if we select display now, we can see, yes, ACES CG, sRGB, ACES. Same thing here, ACES CG, sRGB, ACES. And the images match very well. You can see these images look a little different. And that is because if we interpret footage and we select ignore the alpha, then yes, we can get that image but I'll continue with pre-multiply because I want my alpha. Now to check this, I'm going to render this out. Render, and I will re-import the render and just make sure that it's looking correct, and it is. Now what about Nuke? Okay, here I am in Nuke. I'm going to press S for settings. In settings, the only adjustment that needs to be made is in the color tab of the project settings. But first, let's hit R to import our EXR. We can read in that file. We hit one to view it. Spacebar for full screen, hit F to frame. Now you'll see that looks a lot different than here. In fact, if no color correction was applied, that's what it would look like. Now, if I hit S to go into the project settings, you'll see the color management option. Right now, we're letting Nuke handle the color management but we want the OCIO color space. So if we select OCIO and change the config to ACES 1.2, and this is all included in Nuke, now we will get the proper image. And this image matches when I select OCIO. And in fact, it is a direct match. If I wanna export this out now, what I can do is hit W for the right. I'll just save this file as a quick time. But when I do, I got an invalid LUT selected. And that's because in our output transform, nothing was selected. 
if we go back here in Maya, the display device is sRGB. That means if we come in here and select this output sRGB, or here in color spaces, output, it's off screen, but it's output sRGB. Now if I render this, the movie will match the colors. I'll render out the first four frames, and I will import that QuickTime. Here's the QuickTime, matches the same one out of After Effects, which matches our original render out of Maya with the OCIO color profile. In Maya, the V-Ray frame buffer, if I were to select Save an Image, that will bake all my color correction to this image. So now if I saved, I can save it as Test 2. I come back here into After Effects. If I import that image now, you'll see if I select, right click, Interpret Footage, Main, Color Management, Preserve RGB. Now I have this image here. The one with the color profile baked into the image against the one with the plugin and the config OCIO file. So it's up to you in which way you prefer to work. I prefer using the config file so I can adjust my colors at any time. Great. And friends, that is how you work with Aces and Open Color IO in Maya, After Effects, and Nuke. It took a little bit of time for me to learn and understand how you had to set this up, so I hope this video can serve as a time saver for those who are looking for a simple understanding and how to get this color management working in all of your 3D apps and compositing apps. The same principles apply in other 3D software packages such as Houdini, Modo, and 3ds max cinema 4d and the applications of applying the config file later after renders can apply in other compositing packages as well so friends thank you very much for watching please stay safe and healthy wherever you are live long and prosper <laughs>